few aspects of humanity have baffled anthropologists, quite like the enigma of bipedalism. With a posture unique among all mammals, we are the only ones to stand upright on two legs. It's a unique attribute that sets us apart from all other living mammals and represents a major evolutionary innovation that, at first glance, seems unlikely to have succeeded. After all, bipedal primates are slower, clumsier, and more prone to falls and injury than their quadrupedal counterparts. And yet, despite these challenges, bipedalism has allowed us to thrive as a species, enabling us to expand our population to a 6 billion people and claim our position as the dominant species on the planet. It's a powerful adaptation that demands explanation, inviting us to explore the mysteries of our evolutionary history and the factors that shaped us into the beings we are today. In our previous video, we have discussed the anatomical changes associated with bipedal locomotion. In this video, we will discuss the early evidences of bipedal walking. A significant amount of research has been conducted to determine the origin of bipedalism. Charles Darwin suggested that Africa was the birthplace of human evolution because of the similarities between humans and primates such as chimpanzees and gorillas found on the continent. However, other researchers argued that humans were more closely related to orangutans and evolved in Asia. The discovery of fossils, including Neanderthals in Europe and Homo erectus in Asia, further fueled this debate. People at this time thought that bipedalism, which differentiates humans and apes, evolved around 1 to 2 million years ago. As these fossils were considered as the transition between humans and apes, this opinion was challenged in 1924 when Raymond Dirt discovered a young child fossil in South Africa. After subsequent discoveries of different Australopithecus fossils from different parts of Africa, anthropologists widely accepted that Australopithecus was the first true hominid adapted to terrestrial bipedalism, pushing the date further back to around 4 million years. These claims were further supported by Latoli footprints, probably belonging to Australopithecus afarensis, as they provide a clear evidence of hominid bipedalism between 3.6 to 3.8 million years ago. Australopithecus anamensis, an older version of the genus, also appears to have been a biped, extending the history of hominid bipedalism to around 4.8 million years ago. Recent discoveries across Africa push the origin of bipedalism further back to around 7 million years ago. Recent research suggests that the divergence of the lineages leading to great apes and modern humans occurred around 6 to 7 million years ago. One hypothesis suggests that humans evolved from an ancestor that walked on its knuckles, like several modern day apes. Knuckle walking is a form of quadrupedal walking in which the forelimbs hold the fingers in a partially flexed posture that allows body weight to press down on the ground through the knuckles. Gorillas, bonobos, and chimpanzees use this style of locomotion. This form of hand walking posture allows these tree climbers to use their hands for terrestrial locomotion while retaining long fingers for gripping and climbing. It may also allow small objects to be carried in fingers while walking on all fours. However, the bony ridge near the base of the finger in chimps and gorillas that arises due to knuckle walking is not present in humans or early hominids just discussed. However, some anthropologists discovered ledges and notches in the wrist joints of early hominids that are classic traits of knuckle walkers. These traits are believed to be leftovers from knuckle walking ancestors of early hominids, suggesting that humans have a knuckle walking ancestry that they share with chimps and gorillas. However, the current fossil evidence supports the thesis that last common ancestor of modern humans and apes was not a knuckle walker. 
This estimation is consistent with recent paleontological discoveries, including Sahelanthropus cadensis, which has been dated to be 6.5 to 7.5 million years old. The authors of the study on Sahelanthropus cadensis suggest that it is closely related to later hominids rather than chimpanzees or gorillas, based on a unique combination of primitive and derived characteristics. Sahelanthropus cadensis may have been an upright biped, but further evidence is needed to confirm this hypothesis. Ororin tugenensis, which is approximately 6 million years old, has been identified as a bipedal hominid based on the study of lower limb wounds. The traits are also more similar to later Homo species than Australopathicines in terms of the position of the lesser tocanter, the morphology of the femoral neck, and the proximal shaft. However, its humerus is more similar to that of Australopithecines, suggesting climbing adaptations. Recent research supports the notion that Ororine to Genensis was bipedal, but not more closely related to Homo than to Australopithecines. Ardipithecus or Ardi fossils were found in Middle Awash, Ethiopia in a wooded paleo environment. Two fossil species discovered are Ardipithecus ramidus, which lived about 4.4 million years ago, and Ardipithecus cadeva, dated to approximately 5.6 million years ago. Initial analysis indicated that Ardipithecus could be very similar to chimpanzees. However, more recent analysis based on canine size and lack of canine sexual dimorphism indicated that Ardipithecus was characterized by reduced aggression and that they more closely resembled bonobos. Postcranial remains such as fragmentary humerus and ulna as well as few hand and foot phalanges have not been fully analyzed for locomotion and display a combination of ape and hominid traits. Most anthropologists now agree that all the three fossils discussed that is Sahelanthropus, Ororin and Ardipithecus were bipedal hominids. It's generally believed that bipedalism evolved in hominins as an adaptation to living in the savannas and grasslands of Africa. The hypothesis proposes that as the African continent became drier and the forests started to shrink, early hominins that lived in these areas were forced to adopt to a new way of life. It suggests that the savanna acted as a selective pressure for the evolution of bipedalism in hominins. Some researchers agree that the transition from quadrupedalism to bipedalism happened in a forested landscape. However, a different perspective on the evolution of bipedalism suggests that the emergence of bipedalism was a response to the unstudied terrain resulting from the sinking of the Rift Valley. Others believe that a seismic shift recognized by geophysicists deepened the Rift Valley, which cuts through Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. The sinking of the valley produced an upthrust of mountains, leaving the land west of the valley more humid and arboreal, while the east became more arid and dominated by savanna. As a result, the common ancestor of hominins and chimpanzees found themselves divided. Those adaptations to the humid west evolved in the chimpanzee family, while those left in the east invented a completely new reptile in order to adapt to their new life in an open environment. The common use of African apes such as chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas as models when comparing extant primates to probable ancestors. However, it's noted that these apes are not exclusively arboreal and are often adopted to both ground and tree environments. Studies have highlighted how the heaviest members of a taxon are usually terrestrial. In a correlation study of arboreality versus terrestriality to body mass, ground dwelling was found to be common in primates along with arboreal habits. Since their evolution began 65 million years ago in the early Cenozoic era, 
It appears from the early hominid fossils that early ancestors of humans did not have a specialized posture or locomotion for either arboreal or terrestrial movement. However, as they became bipedal, they started to spend less time in the trees to varying degrees in different species. For example, Australopithecus afarensis had both terrestrial and arboreal capabilities, retaining adaptations for movement in trees. As we discover more fossils, the picture of origin of bipedalism is becoming more and more clearer.